Look at them, Isaiah, Rodman said with a sneer, a look of contempt on his face, his eyes looking down from the battlements at the horde of ratmen trying and failing to assail the gates. These beasts waste hundreds of lives on our walls with no chance of victory, but still they come. I would feel pity if they weren't so disgusting. Isaiah stood silently, as was expected. As a simple acolyte in the cabal of the jinn, he was simply required to listen and learn. Instead of speaking, he simply watched as scaven threw themselves at the walls surrounding the city of Ara only to be pushed back over and over again by the gin of fire and stone that were bound into those walls. It is a great power we have, young one. A power so many covet. At this, Isaiah looked up at his master. His mouth briefly opened to speak before his better senses snapped it shut. But not quickly enough for Radovan to not take notice. Radovan sighed, turning to look upon his young charge. You may speak, Acolyte, Radovan said, his voice carrying an air of annoyance. Um, Isaiah began, his nervousness coding every word. My teacher, I know I have brought this up before, and wiser minds than I have debated this, but the message from the storm casts. Before Isaiah could finish, Radovan answered, his voice full of scorn. You're right, Isaiah. Wiser minds than you have discussed this, in length, and those wiser minds have decided that those storm casts can go burn in the sun for all we care. But sir, Isaiah tried to continue, only to be interrupted, our cabal have held off the forces of chaos for generations. When we tied the power of the jinn to our blood, we guaranteed the survival of our people. Just us few have helped to ensure the safety of thousands in this city. We want for nothing because of the power of the jinn, and thus we care for nothing outside of these walls. Let the Stormcast beg. Their god Sigmar hid in safety within his realms as we struggle to survive in a realm gone mad. If he wants our power for his war, he will not have it. Is that clear? Isaiah stood silently, his head bowed in proper subservience. Yes, my lord. Good, Radovan said, turning his head back to the hordes below. Isaiah, I think the lavatory could use a good washing, don't you? Isaiah sighed. Yes, my teacher. Much later that night, Isaiah began climbing the stairs of the Cabal Tower. Situated in the middle of the city of Ara, it was the seat of the government and the home of the Cabal wizards. It was also absurdly high the constraints of the city forcing most buildings within to go up and not out. As he began to reach the ninth and final floor, Isaiah finally noticed something, something he had never heard since beginning his training in the tower. Silence. The usual sound of heated discussion and explosive experiments replaced with an oppressive emptiness. Leaving the enclosed stairwell and opening the door to the hallway, Isaiah saw a nightmare. Prone bodies were thrown across the floor as blood from slit throats and pierced hearts turned the tiled white marble a leaky red. As Isaiah stood frozen, he heard a noise from the end of the hallway. Rushing from a corner came his master, Radovan, sprinting towards the open door of the stairwell. Radovan's usually arrogant face was full of terror, and as he saw Isaiah, he began to yell a command, a command that was suddenly replaced with a shout of pain. Tumbling to the ground, the source of his pain and tumble became obvious. Protruding from Rodovan's ankles were two strange pointed circular discs that had somehow embedded themselves within his flesh. Before Rodovan could even try to get up, a dark shadow fell from the raptors above, landing on his former master and piercing him in the back of the neck with a dagger. The shadow was scaven, that much was obvious. Its rat-like features were unmistakable, but that's where the similarity to most scaven ended. The hordes of ratman outside were barely clothed beasts that struck the walls like mindless animals. This creature wore a simple black leather bodysuit that was worn tight over most of its body. Its face was covered with a strange black cowl, hiding most of its features except for a twitching nose and piercing black eyes. But it wasn't just its clothing that was different, but also its demeanor. Its body movements indicating a confidence and deviousness that shook Isaiah to the very core. Pulling its dagger from Radovan's neck, the black-clad skaven looked up from its kill to see an empty door. 
the young Isaiah already rushing down the stairs. Isaiah ran, taking steps two or three at a time as quickly as he could. He swore he could see dark clad scale all around him, every shadow containing a hidden ratman ready to pounce. As he ran, he concentrated, trying to feel the presence of the djinn. He barely felt anything. With most, if not all, of the other Cabal members dead, the djinn were leaving the city, returning to whatever place between the realms they came from. The city would soon fall, and one lone wizard would not be enough to hold back the horde. With that knowledge, Isaiah knew there was only one thing he could do. Isaiah kept running down the stairs, quickly passing the first floor and heading towards the basements. Past three levels of storage, he eventually arrived at an unimpressive corner of a wall in between two large boxes of antiques. Raising his hands, Isaiah spoke the secret words. Words that had long since lost their meaning. Words, some say, that came from the world that was. el Ha, Ka Sabar, el Sheik, Kofur. With the words uttered, the walls began slowly turning inwards, opening a passage to a hidden tunnel ancient Cabal members crafted long ago, just in case. Isaiah promised to pray to those ancients as soon as he left this doomed city. Isaiah glanced once more back at his former home, a home he could not save, but one he would avenge. He would take his knowledge to the god called Sigmar. The power of Jin binding would live on and hopefully be used to burn chaos from the realms once and for all. Turning back towards the tunnel, Isaiah was shocked to see the sight of a black cloaked scaven standing right in front of him. Before he could react, the scaven's hand shot out, the dagger within it plunging into his chest and piercing his lung. Isaiah fell to his knees, his eyes looking at the scaven with disbelief. How? Isaiah blurted, his mouth already filling with blood. The scaven smiled, its dagger unmoving as it considered the young acolyte's words. Clan found tunnel long, long ago, yes. The Skaven started, its smile not leaving its unnatural lips. But door with Jin block path. Jin very powerful, yes, yes, but very stupid. Only want password. Don't care who says. Clan Eshin very patient. We wait. We listen. Listen from outside at what you say. Listen to see how you think. And have long time to guess. The Skaven moved closer, its mouth soon close enough to almost lick Isaiah's ear. Was tempted to let you live. To let others know of what happened here, here. But Clan Eshin very professional. Promised you all dead. Would hate to break agreement, at least with our good reason. But no worry. Only hired to kill, not capture. No torture or slavery for you. Can't say same for your people. And with that, the Skaven slowly twisted the knife, and all Isaiah knew before the dark took him was a blinding pain and the knowledge that his people would soon be erased from history. No clan best represents the aspect of the Skaven as the hidden threat than the Skaven of Clan Eshin. Infiltrators and assassins, they eliminate threats to Skaven kind with both guile and hidden blade, weakening the enemy from within as other forces aim to destroy them from without. One important thing that sets the Skaven of Clan Eshin apart from other clans is its apparent unity. All Skaven of other clans bicker and vie for power among themselves the urge for domination inherent in their very blood, but the Skaven of Clan Eshin show no sign of this natural rivalry. The clan apparently a disciplined machine, given orders from superiors carried out without the lower ranking Skaven even trying to make his leader look bad or himself look good in the process. With this apparent loyalty, Clan Eshin could easily replace the heads of other clans and make themselves the rulers of all Skaven kind. Instead, they choose to hire themselves as simple mercenaries selling their skills to the highest bidder and mostly following their buyer's instructions. Although, some say this unity is a simple cover. The usual scaving backstabbing done in the various hidden enclaves the scaven of Clan Eshin have across the realms. Of course, this is all rumor.
as no one who values not being afraid of his shadow has been stupid enough to try to find out. The most common members of the clan seen by most are the Night Runners. Taught the most basic of clan secrets, they make up the main bulk of the clan Eshin forces. Using their special skills to harass enemy forces by employing strange, unscaven like tactics like flanking. Despite these advanced tactics, the casualty rates of these Night Runners are extremely high. This is intentional, as the heads of Clan Eshin want to ensure only the best rise from the ranks to learn the more specialized techniques of the clan. Night Runners who survive and show aptitude soon become Night Leaders, leading their own band of barely trained rabble to war. Once proven as Night Leaders, these given are taught more specialized skills, becoming Gutter Runners, Clan Eshin infiltrators who go behind enemy lines. Disrupting trade routes, bombing important targets, inciting rebellions, or manipulating greedy members of other races to betray their own comrades. A rare few of these gutter runners become Skaven assassins. Learning the deepest secrets of the clan, they gain abilities that take them far beyond that of normal Skaven. Able to jump several times their height, climb sheer surfaces with ease, and complete acts of dexterity even some elves would be unable to match. However, not even an elite Skaven assassin can kill every foe. For those harder targets, the leaders of Clan Eshin call upon the Great Horn One for its masters of hidden death, the Vermin Lord Deceivers. With skills beyond that of mortals, and the ability to make the shadows its own, it kills the strongest of foes with a casual throw of a Doomstar or the silent stab of a warp stiletto to the back. To be a member of Skaven Clan Eshin is to be a killer in the darkness, to slay your enemies with poison dagger and return to the shadows with none the wiser. Hey guys, this is Arvandis, and I want to say I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like these short stories slash descriptions of various races in Age of Sigmar, please like, subscribe, and comment, and I'll keep doing it. Not only Age of Sigmar, perhaps other games that I have interest in. Anyway, thanks for listening, and see you next time.